Hey guys, welcome to Motion RC for a live walkthrough, walk around uh, our brand new Freewing 90mm FA-18C Hornet, uh, which is going to be coming soon. So the opportunity, so again, this is going to be a live video, so bear with me, I'll make mistakes, I'm sure. First time really doing this, so if we have any technical difficulties, bear with us, but we plan on doing this with a lot of releases coming up. We definitely, for sure, want to uh, see. I already have to turn the mic off on my laptop. But I got the laptop here. I can see your comments. The goal of this is, again, answer any questions. I'm going to walk around the whole model with you guys. Uh, we, have, we have a raw flight from Patrick that we want to show you, just with no sound other than the motor. So uh, really just give you guys as much information as possible and get feedback from you guys, uh, obviously. So... Um, if you've noticed, we released our, uh, we announced this on Tuesday, and then we saw the immediate comments Freewing did, uh, Alpha and our product team did, about a gray one. So I wanted to get that out of the way. You guys can vote. Go to HobbySquawk.com. You can still, you know, cast your vote on if you want a gray one at release. The intention was to always have a gray one down the line, but Freewing, they're hearing everybody saying we want a gray, we want a gray one. And who doesn't want a gray one of the F-18C? So uh, they can probably fast track that for release. Now, as far as ETA is concerned, with Alpha in the comments, he's under the name Flight Videos. He has a little wrench next to him. And Todd and another uh, CS guy, another guy who works with Motion, he does our graphics. I'm sorry, not CS. He's in there as well, so they can answer your questions. But I'm going to start looking through uh, the questions now, get them in, uh, and we'll start as soon as we finish this raw video. So that's where we're going to go now. You're going to see a four, four to five minute flight, just raw, listen to the aircraft, ask your questions. I'm going to start going through, writing them down, and then when we come back, we'll get started, you know, going around the aircraft. So uh, enjoy the flight.
So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much again to Patrick Crowisdale. He's a instructor at the CCRC. He helps uh, new pilots learn how to fly while he's there. But also, if you guys didn't know, he uh, he flies real C-130s in real life over at Dobbins Air Force Base, about a half an hour south of where uh, I am now in Georgia. So there you have it, guys. That was just a raw flight. That's something else I know a lot of people want to see, and I, they just want to hear the plane. So I think we're going to do that with more releases too. So aside from just the flight review, I mean, we just want to bombard you guys with as much information so you can make the most informed decision possible about whatever aircraft you got. So now let's go around. I've been looking through. I saw some people right away. I saw some people asking about the, uh, the pilot. Um, is his helmet going to do, can you get him out of there to paint his helmet yellow? The beauty is they're going to pre-paint the pilot's helmet yellow. This again was not, I don't want to say pre-production. This was definitely a produced model, but this one had some testing and they didn't finalize everything when they sent it out to me. Like when I got this, it had already been flown a bunch of times. Um, you could tell when I took it out of the box. I don't have the regular box art and all that stuff, so that's coming. But yes, you're going to have a yellow painted helmet on the pilot, which you have to do if you're going to do the blues. That's something I mentioned in Patrick. The second we saw it, Patrick looked at it and said, I need a yellow hel helmet on that pilot. So I think let's start. I see a lot of people saying, let's get into the battery bay. So if you guys follow us on Hobby Squawk, um, if you're following the forums there, I've posted some pictures of some measurements of, uh, you know, the hatch itself. So we have cameraman on there. Just give me thumbs up when you, uh, when you get, because obviously I see a delay on the video. So what I have inside is a 5100 carbon. That's our widest pack. Um... 5100 carbon, that's our widest pack, so I just wanted to demonstrate that it can fit in there. So let me tilt the wing down. And when I did my measurements before, we're about 85 or so millimeters across aft in the uh, cockpit, about 80. And then where the battery tray ends, which is about here, you're about 70. I saw a lot of people post on Hobby Squawk, they want to know what type of batteries you can fit. We were able to fit Obviously, we flew it only on the 5006S. I didn't get the new 6006S, uh, which just released from Admiral at the time. So we we're flying on this. You should have no problem getting that in there. And I think if you guys ever wanted to convert this to and try out 8S, then uh, you should have no problem getting two 4Ss or a 6 and a 2 in the cockpit. It's pretty big for such an aircraft with such a narrow fuselage compared to, say, uh, the F4 or the F22 behind me. Um, so what else? Let me turn it. So let's look, see what people are saying. Diameters of the wheels. We'll get to that when we go underneath the plane. I think we'll start at the top. So, you know, you can see now I, again, I mentioned this on Hobby Squawk. If you look down in the canopy, there will be an MCB-E. Uh, it is, it is uh, placed right in the back on, behind where the hatch is. So there's a lot of space back there, but I have a bit of a rat's nest. When I got this model, it wasn't the final leads. I mean, my ribbon cable's probably this long coming out of the wing, so it's all just tucked in there with what I had. So this is not how your final production will look like when it comes to you guys. But um, more than enough space to achieve your CG, and Alpha can talk about what the CG is in the comments section because, again, when... We got this plane before we flew. We didn't have a manual yet. The manual hadn't been written. Alpha gave me some very basic numbers, but Patrick, we were just at the field and he didn't have rates. He's just like, what, what, what are the rates? What are the flaps should be? I'm like, we're just gonna have to go with what we know. So he just sort of did it on his own and the thing flew great. So we couldn't even tell you yet if during those flights we were flying at what the book uh, setups would be. So I think that just goes to show how versatile the aircraft is. One thing we noticed about it right off the bat and Patrick was impressed with the fact that it, you know, she can definitely float in the way the F-22 does, which is nice. And the F-22, for me anyway, was a bit of a different feel when it comes to jets. You don't really have to drive her home uh, the way you do other ones. And this, you know, this plane can definitely uh, land nice and slow. But our field, we have to come in a little hot because we have to make that terrible turn before the trees. We're in a fishbowl at the Cobb County Radio Control Club. So when you come in, you you got to keep some speed up in the turn, and then you sort of got to drop under the trees and then just put her put her in. But we get her done there. So now we're on top. 
actual rudder control surfaces and I plan on taking some of this apart too while we go but again front piece your nose cone so your nose cone just magnetically connected uh, the way most free wing jets are so that's nice and they put a little plate in there for guys thinking it might fall off it, it's on there pretty solid which is nice uh, let's walk around to the back we do have our lights and I'll plug her in a little bit but you do have a strobe on top and then you have your navigation lights on the leading edge extension which is cool and you could definitely see those light up in the video when we got under the trees or it was a little dark and then let me get my tray because I think it's time well let's get her plugged in I think Sorry guys, a little tough to see all the comments, so I'm just going to go through it. Uh, yes, Alpha said dual functioning rudders, of course. Uh, you have two rudder servos, two elevator servos, two flap servos, two aileron servos, and then a nose gear servo, and I think that's it. So I go nine servos in the aircraft. But let me get her plugged in. I'll keep the 5100 in there. Turn it around. So now again, we see our lights are on, everything functioning. So I don't have any of like, I don't, I didn't set up my rates. I have everything just on high, a high rate, full throws. But so your full flying stab in the back. I'll turn her around. Let's turn her. Let's turn that butt towards you. So we can see some of the. Sure. So people asking about rudders, of course. Got your rudder. And then what I love what he did, and you might be able to see it from the back, but take a go to two to a flap. So when you bring the flaps down, the flaps have, you know, they molded in the, uh, the flaps to be the Fowler flap hinges. So it's just really cool. There's like a gap between uh, that you could see, which just makes it interesting. And Alpha said he loves when he's, when he's approaching himself, when he's nose in, and you can sort of see through them. So I'll hold it up above me and you can see underneath but I thought that was a really cool design and what we're calling low vis on uh, low visibility so obviously you can't really fully hide the servo horns and stuff and you could probably paint those those white clips blue if you wanted to I actually went to Home Depot already I have the color for you guys for the color match because if you noticed in the flight video people called it out immediately the run cam falling off yeah, the Velcro just peeled the paint right off the back. I had it by the motor compartment. Velcro just ripped off when he pulled the high G, but it was such, such a nice pass that I, I had to leave it in. But I just, I just color matched it, and you could barely tell under here with the color we got. So, go to the, where the motor hatch is. I think it's down there. Hard to see. She's a big, she's a big 90, but she's really really nice so we went through flaps let me get my tray out i put it over here let's turn her upside down and we'll walk, work around the gears i know people ask questions about the wheel sizes so i can measure those we can do all that line let's put that down get rid of our flaps and now they can see the landing gear and we'll do some up close shots Sorry, people are telling me what I should do, looking around. So the gear, really nice gear. And again, I know people, I saw in the, wait for the sound. I know I saw people talking about, you know, can these doors, you could definitely modify the doors to probably, you know, you could put a gear, I'm sure. Modelers can do anything. So you could, if you want the doors to go back down, but I think just to preserve some weight on the aircraft. They just didn't need it, but it's a really nice setup. It's these little plastic hooks. So, Alex, I'll show you. Turn it towards you. Look into the well, and you can see it's like a little plastic piece that's spring-loaded. So when you let go, but it makes it nice because it's just mechanical. You shouldn't have to worry about that getting caught up or anything or a servo door that doesn't go. And then you do get the landing light on the, uh, on the front of the nose, too, which is really nice steerable nose gear that's the only servo that's going to be in the uh the nose gear door here so steerable nose wheel works 
Now, one thing, guys, we didn't get to show in the video, and I saw people asking, there is a tail hook. So it, it's just connected by plastic at the top. Let me turn it towards, I'll turn the plane towards you guys again. And it will, it will be glued down. It's more for static display, but I don't see why you can't get a, uh, you know, a servo back there. I'm sure people will do it. I know RC Jet Dude will probably do it. He did it to his A4, I believe. And, uh, you know, it's probably very simple to do, but it is there. It'll just be tack glued down. And then you see one of the coolest features, what I think one of the nicest features of, and I know probably people want to see it more up close, is back here for the elevator servos. So... As Alpha's probably saying in the comments, when you get your, when you get your aircraft, um, these covers are going to be included, and they're not going to have the decals on. The Buno will be a decal that you apply yourself, but neither here nor there. All these covers do, they get foam tacked on, and they hide the whole servo unit in there. So I think that's a pretty cool feature, so you're not seeing, you know, again, I know people, when they see the F-22, they see the black servo, and that's, you know, a little annoyance i guess for some pilots who want that full scale i just think that's a nice added touch that you don't see and hopefully we could do it to more jets but it obviously was just easier to do probably with uh with this aircraft so as we walk through let me take a look at some of the comments just want to drag back up see what i'm missing yes people asking does it handle does it handle grass? Yeah, we took off and, and landed on the grass next to our runway in the flight review video um, with the big, you know, all trailing link suspension struts up front. So again, you have trailing link there. And then in the back, they actuate really well. Gotta give it a push. Now the difference, I know I think Victor Shamulus asked the difference in space. Uh, I don't see why you'd ever take the gear doors off on just a normal grass landing unless a you're flying from you know grass that's completely uncut or you just land way too hard where you're probably gonna if you're destroying the doors on a landing you're destroying more i would think you're you're probably coming in just too hot and that's when anything could happen but you shouldn't have any problem with this bird on grass and as you just saw in the raw flight this 6s power system that same one that's in the uh f4 so it's the 37 48 1750 kv with the nine blade, it's very efficient, and I mean, I hope you guys saw it. That was, you know, the raw flight. It sounds great, and it, this plane moves through the sky. Uh, even uh, Patrick remarked on one of his first flights, it's just like it felt like an 80 millimeter jet. Which, um, funny. What? They want to see the nose gear bag. Oh, they want to see the nose gear bag. Oh, sure, get in there, Alex. Sorry, I have my cameraman looking. It's hard for me to look at all the comments while you're sort of just going through. But I want to make sure you guys see everything. And again, we have time before release, so we'll have more video. I'll have a full build video coming. And join Hobby Squad, because we'll have pictures of all this stuff. You know, we're just as excited about it as you guys are. And I know that the blues are going to be changing from the C model to Super Hornets in the future, but for the past, what, 33 years they've flown on this? On this plane, to me, this is what a, the Blue Angels are. To I, my generation, I guess my kids will have a different version of the Blue Angels like my father did before me. So let's see what else. So guys, if you have questions, can you just uh, throw in some more questions now? So then I can see. You need to take the gear out to get the doors off. Yeah, my F-15 nose gear handles like a champ. So just going through. So I guess let's show you, uh, let me take a wing off, I guess. I'll unplug her and then, you know, sort of take it apart. But the whole aircraft is put together in about, I believe it was about 14 screws. Sorry, bringing her around the table. Turn her the opposite direction. Let me get her unplugged. Let's show you some of the connections here. I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna pop her, I'm gonna pop her right back up on the table. Ah, actually, I could do a, let's do a vertical stabilizer first. So vertical stabilizer is gonna be screwed together. There's three screws. You have two on top. You can see in the back, and then there's gonna be one on the side. 
so they're pretty easy to to get on and off. Oh, that one's not going to fit. That one's my main wing. I love electric power. What is the actual speed of this plane? I see from James Yates. Alpha can can answer that. We didn't have a radar gun when we went out to fly it, but. I don't know. I, I find it hard to really tell the difference between a couple miles per hour. I just know, does the plane look good when it's in the air? I think it does. And it flies really well. It's maneuverable. I had a chance to fly it twice. Patrick probably flew it 30 times for the, uh, to get all the media that we went out. We went out a bunch of different days to, uh, just gather a lot of footage, you know? And when you're flying for those, like, announcement type videos, you know, we like to make it look as cinematic as possible, so you just tell your pilot, hey, we're doing a flight just fast passes down the runway, you know, or just... So here we go, Alex. I got this off now. So your rudder or your vertical stabs will be connected like so. So you have molded plastic parts for all the connections. Servos already pre-installed. I believe the rod will probably be installed already, but I'm, I can't attest to that. This is how it came to me. But uh, either way, you might put it on yourself, and that's just the one rudder lead going in. So no real problem getting that on and off. Just gotta, gotta just tuck it back in. There's a little tunnel that goes in, tucks back in fits perfectly and screws pull it down oh one of the cool things is the BL bypass if you guys see on the first on the side you can see that air actually comes through the side and then up and out the fuselage and that's molded in alpha good test i think it's might have some plastic hard bits in there but either way it looks really cool on up when you look down that you see the space and then when you look then when you look up top it's all spin around Jeremy Lamb was telling me to get a uh, to get a lazy Susan, but take a look at those. Just what a cool added feature. Probably not easy to put into a mold, but really nicely done. And those things that obviously for the guys who are really concerned with the scale jet on the ground. To me, when it comes to playing, I just want them to fly. That's my first. <laughs> that's my first goal with Jess. I want them to fly really well. And, and look like what they're supposed to look like in the sky. All the little features, I don't get a chance to do any of those modifications because obviously I got to keep these planes stock. I got to show people that they fly as is and uh, bring them to shows like that so I don't get to do. But I know guys are already talking about all the crazy stuff they can do, which is awesome. Um, okay, so I took a vertical stab off. Next, go over to the uh, side rail. You look, so the side rail is two screws on each side. And if you notice, I mean, I thought this was going to sort of give it away, that a gray one was eventually coming. You have the MWS slotting system already on there. So people who wanted to put livery, uh, to put ordnance on, or people initially were thinking we're probably going to try to paint this plane gray, or eventually when we came out with a gray one, um, yeah, armament is going to be, you know, there's armament available already that'll work, like the F-16C. Uh, the 90 millimeter, because that's 111 scale, and so is the F-18. And what? On the website. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could show you on the website uh, some of the armament features. So there is a set that gives you the rails. So if you're still, still looking at me, then when I turn it upside down, there are two slots already molded into the wing, just cut through the decal. And that's where the railing system would go. I think it's 199. There's like railing system where you're going to put your pylons. So we'll talk about ordnance more as we get closer to release. But uh, there should be no problem getting ordnance. And we probably have enough jets with enough ordnance that are close. Your aim sidewinders, things like that, that'll be able to get it done. I don't know if we'll have that when we get a gray for release. Um, but either way, you'll be able to get your armament on there because an F-18 does look pretty cool when it has all its uh, ordnance already on. So let me flip it over now. And again, I didn't screw back in my vertical stab. Let me show you the wing connection. Again, it's just going to be two screws for the main wing. 
So let me get in. There we go. Ah, oh, this thing's a godsend at the field. I hate taking out the screws all the time. Let's see if I can find it without looking. I got it. We got it. So it's standard two screws, and I'm going to pull the wing, just going to slide right out. Now, again, I said I had a super long ribbon cable, but unplugging it, you just have your basic ribbon cable, two molded plastic pieces, and that's the side. And that's going to get because there's nothing really to the wings, just the two servos, the one for the flaps and uh, one for the flaps, one for the aileron. So, you know, there wasn't a need for any lighting, but you know, you have the ribbon cable anyway, which is nice for your connections. And there it is. And it would go, if you show the side, you've got, you know, easy access. I mean, it's, it goes together. I, I, I know we call them build videos. We can't, we shouldn't even call them build videos anymore. We should just call them assemblies because you're not really building much. And that's what I love about it. Cause within about an hour, you're, you could be at your field and doing maiden after you get an aircraft. So that's the wing, and I guess let's go around to the tail. The only other piece, I mean, the when you put this thing together, it goes together really fast, like most new free wing jets. I'm just going to come around here, and I'm going to show you the, the rod. Take off one, one step. I'll do the one closest to camera. two screws on the back and she comes right out so you would just you're just going to put in the articulating rod or unless that alpha can attest he'll he'll let me know I, I forget when i took it out of the box if this was in or not or i did but it has two machined holes for your screws for the two screws and elevator's going to sit there but this should all be in installed and ready to go and then when you're done and obviously bind it up make sure everything's centered before you just foam tack on the little cover which is right over here. You see, machine really well. It's really nicely done, I think. And, you know, pretty standard now as far as most of the new freaking jets, like F-22, similar to this, and I'm sure other ones back in the day were as well. I'll just get that back on there. So she doesn't fall out. And then I'm gonna come back around and let's check some of the comments. I hope I've been answering a bunch of your questions, but one thing I realized right off the bat is I almost need a third person just to call out comments for you because it's hard to walk around a plane, engage what all the comments are. So let me get that off for a second. Flip around again. There we go. So cool, two-tone on the exhaust. So guys, what else can I go through? So I'm gonna wait for your comments here. I just wanna see anything that pops up at this point now, I'll, I'll you know, I'll try to answer. But basically, um, yeah, if you notice on the back, our wheel wells were cut on this model. Um, that's just because, again, when they made the production, this first version, they're still not done with the aircraft just because they have the mold done. That's when they could go in and test wheel sizes and all that stuff. So this model, again, like Alpha said in the comments, had a ton of flights on it. So that's why people called out in the announcement video, oh, the wheels are cut to fit. That's just because they were testing out a bunch of different wheels. Yours will not look like that. Wanted to say that. Um, Alpha probably mentioned the decal set. So decals out of the box, you're going to get all the spots that are going to be the same on every plane. So... But in the box, so they're already going to be uh, included uh, or installed on the aircraft. You're just going to have to put on your number and your Buno. And uh, I believe what you're seeing now is the decal sheet for, for what would be like, you know, your, um, I'm sorry, if you're buying a fuselage or you had a crash or you just wanted to get the decal sheet, you could buy the full decal sheet, which will have the underwing graphics, the side graphics. So that's just what that whole sheet looks like. But you're probably only going to get part of that. Uh, when you get the PNP model uh, to you. So then, um, what else did I have on here? Oh, people wanted me to measure the wheels. So let me do that quick. Or Alex, can you see? I'll measure this side. 
Let's do the nose tires first. I'm about 42 millimeters. I'll hold it up there. I don't know if you can see down that. Can you zoom in there and see that? With the elf eyes. <laughs> so about 42 millimeters on the nose wheels and the mains. The mains are going to be about 62 millimeters. So I'm to get on, on there. About 62 on the wheels. So any guys thinking of uh, you know, then let me press down if you want to see the clearance for the, the door for you grass guys. There you go. You can see that you still have, you know, I can still get my hand under there when you're at full compression. And she pops right back up. But I really love that cantilevered look in the back on the, on the F-18. I'm sure guys will probably end up painting because I believe these are white on the Blue Angels model. The, um, you know, right there. So that'll probably look really cool. I'm excited. I mean, we're all, we always get excited to see what guys do as far as customizing. Because the second a new plane gets released, we see all the engines turning and everybody said, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And we absolutely love to see it. Yes, anything about price, I'm sure they're answering it in the live chat, guys. We just, you know, when that, we'll get there when we're getting ready to send it out. So once we make a product page and we're close to shipping these, then, you know, you'll have all that information well before uh, you make a decision. Nose wheel looks flat. I just saw a comment on, no, I guess it's just, just sitting there. But we've flown it a bunch. Wingspan length, so guys, wingspan is going to be 41 inches. Let me get the wing on. It's uh, 41 inches across, and from the nose tip to the nozzle was about 57, 58 inches, but I think to the elevator, it's about 61. Alpha could give you the exact uh, model in there. Let's do some, how about that? That's what we'll do. Let's show some size comparisons. So some models that people have. I have some models off to the side of the camera here that I had ready to go. Let me just tuck this back in. Tuck this back in. See my ribbon cable so long. I can't even tuck her in. They want the 22 and the 18. 22 and the 18? Or the, I don't have an 18, I have 15. I have a 15 on me. All right, so let me move this out of the way. Slide it over. Mary Boozer, where's your sticker? Right over here, dude. Mary Boozer decal. You think it would look good on the side? Mary Boozer, good uh, friend of Motion RC, has started a new YouTube channel. You guys could check it out. Him, his father, do some great work detailing stuff, great flights, really cool stuff. So definitely check out Mary Boozer's. And he's got these cool decals because I believe their grandfather worked on B-24s. It was the Mary Boozer. B24. So maybe I'll just stick that on my uh, my witchcraft for you guys. So I'm gonna line this up, this out of the way. So we'll start with the F4. How about that? So now you have him here. Get all this out of the way, and we got. Uh, and we've got the F4. And I'll hold it over the top. We got the nose. Sorry guys, I've been a little under the weather. I can't get rid of the sniffles for some reason. So you know what, I'll do this. Let's pick up this fat bottom girl. Make the rockin' world go round. So trying to line up the nose to nose. There's the F4 and the F18C. So I think that's a pretty good comparison there, if you guys can see the size. What's next? You want to see the F4? Uh, the F22, rather? Let me take the nose off. What? 22? 22. I didn't drop the gear for the 22. That's okay. I don't normally store my plane's nose down unless 
they got plastic or I put foam underneath or something. I'm be crazy about it. Here's the F22. Alice, can you tell from me? Should the F18 look just a tad longer? Tad longer, but basically, I mean, it's a nice 90 millimeter jet. And I'm excited that we did the. I'm excited that we did the blues because if you look at our 90 millimeter jet lineup, it's all gray airplanes. It's all with some drops of red and some camo. And then we'll do the F-15. But now we have a nice blue model. Table's not big enough for the sure. both of us, man. This is just a regular Home Depot 8x4. Can't get much more space here. But here's the F-15. Let me turn her even. And the F-15. This is the only other 90 mil that I have in studio. I don't have anything bigger, but there it is. So it's definitely longer than the F-15. Which is really cool. Now, obviously, the F F-15 has the air brake on top. I've never used it in flight. It's mostly just to his ground. I know the F-18 has one in real life, but we will have a 3D printed part for at least you static guys. All right. So we'll have three printed part sets. So we will have an air brake included. So if you guys can probably servo drive that with the actuator that comes with you, the F-15 or other ones and then we're going to have the whole cockpit set so you're going to get the hud you're going to get the control panel and the seat so you guys can do that and uh last one you're going to have some oh some uh decoration around the uh decorative bits of the landing gear as far as 3d parts go so if you guys are into 3d printing then you know by all means so we got a 121 in f15 weighs twice as much and f15 was a was a heavier bird but i think that also again it's age uh but it has a lot of those extra bits you know it has servos driving the nose steering it has servos driving the doors being closed the actuator add a lot of stuff onto it too and at that time you know every so every few years the motors get better things get better like this nine blade is just so efficient and it's been working so well in other jets but who knows three years from now you know, this power system in this is going to be a little behind whatever's, whatever's coming. So, what can you do as far as that goes? So, guys, what else can I help you with? Let me look at the comments. Mm -mm -mm. Danny Colazzo, you did, you well, you taught me, not thought me, but, yeah. Hey, Danny, how you doing? Oh, thanks, William. So how's every so it looks like we got most parts 8s from the f22 part should drop right in i'm guessing um sure but i'd say i mean guys want to be so quick to jump to more power more speed fly it on the stock system first i'm telling you, you're gonna love it i mean i i don't i don't see if 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 that was too slow for you the the flight videos then man you just really love to rip but Oh, that's the other thing I talk about. You guys, instead of 8S on the 90, maybe try, you could try 8S on an 80 because your models, mine did not. <clears throat> and I'm sure Alpha can share some pictures of that in Hobsquawk on the forum and such. And I'll spread them around Motion RC Fan Media. Um, there will be two inserts inside for the 80 millimeter, to put an 80 millimeter fan inside. So you can power this on an 80 millimeter 8S system if you wanted to. Um, and for guys who just want the R Plus, maybe you have an 80 millimeter laying around like I had one from the Avanti. You could probably drop it in there with those firm ins foam inserts and, you know, do well. Alpha still wants to do so. Alpha, James, show the exhaust tubes. Exhaust tubes. So Alpha wants to see the, to see the butt. Now when mine came, these were, I had to, I had to tack glue those on. They came out for me, but... There's your exhaust tubes. Really nicely done. Pick the butt up. I'm gonna pick it up a little bit. Down there. And 
then out the front, see the intakes. Flat to elevator mix. I believe Patrick did that a little bit. There's the intakes. Again, the circular intakes as opposed to the Hornet, which are the, you know, defining square ones. You know, nice Coke bottle shape on the leading edge extension or what we call the wing root glove. I saw people having a debate about that. Everybody debates all the little details. Um, yeah, guys, this has been... Why blue, not green? Honestly, F-22 is good for that. So, oh, yeah, well, flat, uh, flight time. So now we've had about three. Well, we have two full flights now between the, the first flight on the flight review and that raw video, which we'll upload right after this. We'll have that raw video live for you guys to check out. Um, Patrick, pretty much every time we flew it, we were only flying on the 5,000 success. And he was coming down every time between about four minutes, 30 seconds, and five minutes. Every single time, and we we're always about a storage charge. We we're about 3.8 when he would come down on this pack. So we're excited. We're going to go back out with it. I'm going to have him do a bunch of flights on the new 6,000 because with the way he flies and probably even more throttle management, I think you could push this jet to almost six minutes. So we're going to go for it. Might as well. But uh, yeah, just beautiful, beautiful flying, absolutely beautiful flying jet. Where are all the plastic? Oh, well, yeah. I did the removable nose earlier, Alpha. So show that again. That comes through there. So all the plastic bits, you know, obviously your leading edge is plastic. See the plastic parts around the side. I think I kind of went around all that alpha, didn't I? No? Fins, I mean, you're gonna have to glue those in. Mm -mm. Oh, Jeremy, it sits on its butt when the battery is out. So that's why I have the battery in there. She'll sit down. So, if that's it's not usually something I, I worry about, but <laughs> it's great. Let's see. Again, guys, price questions like price and ETA are going to get answered a little later on, a couple weeks. Give us a little time on that. We're just showing you everything. No leading edge slats. You weren't able to... You know, that's, again, adding more weight. It's a foam model, so it's tough to get things like that, you know, on there. Who knows? Maybe in the future they'll be able to do that. But we're, again, going for performance and, and efficiency, you know. Want to fly it again. Do it again, James. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's Friday, man. I'm starting to run out of things to say. And I, and I, and I can usually talk. Uh... So who else still here, guys? Let's see. What else? A answer questions right now. Fire. Fire off. Let's do a, what is it, rapid fire session. Anything I might have missed. Landing gear doors. Mox jet. I did that earlier. This video, again, this video is going to replay. It's going to live forever. So you can always watch it back. But uh, one more time. The doors underneath, they are... They are just driven by these, your, your landing gear touches, they're mechanically closed, and they're on a spring. So they're spring-loaded there, and this one is spring-loaded as well. So they'll just close when the gear closes, which I like. Again, you're saving weight without having the servos in there. Just another servo that could potentially go wrong. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I saw a guy say they want to they have the gear doors close, you know, but, like, I, that's something that I just don't think... You know, never never bothers me with a plane. I, I, I'm only coming in with the gear down when I'm landing. But Patrick was doing some of those great gear down rolls like the, uh, like the Blue Angels do. So that's awesome. There's no TV on here. I showed the doors. Oh, plastic capped intakes. Ah, that's what he wanted to show. Yeah, so the, the intakes do have plastic on the, uh, you know, on the leading edge. A lot of parts are molded plastic bits, so it's more than just foam around the whole aircraft. So, can you see that out? Mm -hmm. So, like, you can just see it ends about right there. 
which is gorgeous and I didn't I didn't screw the wing back on so disregard that sort of falling off Yeah, I mean TV is 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 a nice idea in theory, but like like with the F-22, what do you need it for? You can fly some pretty crazy aerobatics with the F-22 if you're in high rate and you have your battery set back. So I'm sure you can do have a lot of fun with this, but guys can add TV. But I just think it's the type of thing that just seems like you just add more weight and adding more stuff that could potentially go wrong when it comes to that. LEDs. You want to see the LEDs? I showed those already, but I'll plug her back in while she's on the table. So you can see her just lighting up. I didn't notice. Let me see if the if the light comes. Gear up. Gear out. And I don't know. I have to check. Maybe one of my. I think my nose light might not be plugged in. It should be there. This is nine blade, Brian. This is a nine blade. This has the 3748 uh, 1750 KV nine blade fan in it, like the F4, the 6S plug and play F4. LEDs, SDRC splits, so you do have a landing light, I, no light, I don't know why mine didn't turn on, but it might just be not plugged in in the back, I have to check, but you also get the nav lights, so green and right there on the leading edge extension, and you have a strobe on top, and with the MCB-E inside, you can change the ports of where they go, so if you wanted that to be on the whole time, maybe you're flying at late night, or you know, as the sun's going down, you just want more light, you could always do that, and then there's a bunch of empty ports. I know Jeremy Salt does those cool lights on the vertical, on the verticals for like the F-22. He made those himself, uh, and he's already wanting to probably make things like that. But you could get lights anywhere else you want to put them with the MCB dash E. You have all that room in there, and then obviously run a separate battery uh, for the UBAC for things like that. Patrick's here. Patrick's here. James, I'm here to answer any questions. Where were you 45 minutes ago, Patrick? <laughs> no, but everybody give Patrick congrats. The guy's just doing it out of the goodness of his heart to fly for us, and we could be happier to have him fly these jets whenever he can because uh, he just flies them so well. He, you know, real pilot in real life, so it, it caters to uh, the flight demonstrations. And with, with his stick movements, I really like that, and I, I like adding that to every video for the flight view, so... You new guys, you could just see those inputs because it's funny, like watching Patrick fly. Because even me, I consider myself an average pilot. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be an inch inverted off the ground or anything. But I'm like everybody else. I have my good days. I have my bad days, and uh, I, I learn a lot from watching Patrick sticks. I must have watched him fly this a bunch of times before I put it up. Just get the idea. Those, those, uh, he makes those clean movements where you just see, you know, little turn, quarter turn. You know, everything back to center. Nice, simple, whereas at least it was for me when I was starting out flying, it was a lot of, you know, you think you have to move your fingers around all the time and you get yourself crazy, but he really flies it really, really well. And again, sorry guys, I'm, I'm leaking out of my nose. Cup of coffee. I got three little kids, so I get sick almost every other week, as you'd expect. Yeah, guys, I think that, I mean, if that's about it, we can show, you know what, Alex, can you throw up, can I talk and have the video uh, of the chase? You want to throw the chase up there? So we'll show you some of the footage of Alex. Uh, this is our cameraman. He's behind the camera now. He does a lot of that chase footage you saw in the announcement, and that was so much fun to, uh, to do. It just makes it look so much more impressive, this guy. The only thing I wish I had was three or four more of these with guys trying to fly in formation. That would be that would have been the best thing. Or what I would have loved to do if I had a second one during the flight review, do a sneak pass. Would have been amazing if I would have came from behind myself with a second jet. And just freak everyone out. But uh 
We're really excited for this jet overall. We can't thank Freewing enough for, you know, helping our product team, you know, our team and Freewing's team working together to give you guys hopefully all the jets you could ever want. And obviously there's so much more coming, but this was one that we were really excited to tell people about. So this is the first time we really went early with an announcement like this without having a pre-order, without having, you know, it for sale right away. And because we know a lot of people asked and we tried to not... We don't really like to say anything until though, because things could still, you know, there could always be a problem. That's the fear you get of uh, going early with something. But these are mostly produced now, and they're almost ready to go. So we were just so excited to uh, to do this. Oh, and uh, I wanted to show some of Alpha's photos. He posted these up in Hobby Squawk. So you guys asking about the gray F4. So if you want the armament uh he showed some photos there of of his blue angels but he threw the the racks on from the f f16c that i told you about a little earlier and they threw some of the sidewinders and he, i think the a120s he had on there as well just to show you that you know some of the armament sets we or ordinance we already have will work for the f8 you know for the f18c because it's at that 111 scale which is nice And that was a drone. So Alex was just on like a race quad, the same type of quads the guys are using in the DRL and things like that with a GoPro strap to it. And he's just, he's crazy when it comes to that stuff. He's so good at it. So uh, we love to have him do it. It's just tough with jets all the time, but this one was able to, because the jets just fly too fast for even a drone to keep up. But uh, he did a great job. And this plane slows down so nice that when you have the motion of the drone, the slow-mo, it's just for the, you know, beautiful, beautiful flying so that seems like i hope i answered all do you guys think i answered all your questions what yeah 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 because I, I i was hoping to get i was hoping it was thinking it was a i was thinking it was going to take an hour it was about and that's where we're at now it's about 12 55 so you guys can uh you know, ask any more questions. And as I'll always say, join us on Hobby Squad. Get in those forums. I'm there. Alpha's there. A lot of our customer service guys are there. A lot of our team is there. So, you know, we're always around. And the whole customer family on, on our Hobby Squad forums, we can't thank them enough. But everybody's so helpful. They'll answer any questions about any other plane, not just the F-18C. Uh, if you're on Facebook, jump into our fan media group. It's growing strong. 3,500 people, I believe, in there. And they're all sharing pictures of, you know, their experiences with Motion RC's products. Because the people who make these obviously want you to love them. And they're so happy to see, like I am, to see when people get them. And, you know, we love when people do their own unboxing videos and share pictures and, you know, livery setups and all, all the help that you can get. I mean, that's... Why well, love? I think that's why anybody should love the RC community just in general. Everybody's always so helpful. So uh, some other things I want to say while I got you here live. Uh, in the future, we're going to some shows. So watch out for a show video. We'll tell you where we're going to be uh, in full force. That first show we're going to be doing as Motion RC with a big tent set up and everything will be Joe Nall. So that's May 10th to May 18th. We'll be at the Electric Line in the hangar like we were for Nall in the fall. And uh, you could go back and see all those videos. We'll have similar similar setup, but we will definitely have the F-18 there to fly around. And hopefully we'll have some other new stuff to unveil by that time. So definitely uh, stick around for that. And then we're going to be hosting, uh, we're going to be sponsoring Nephi. So that comes up in June, which is great. And then late August, if you guys check out uh, Hobby Squawk, there's now a new events calendar on the Hobby Squawk uh, on the main page, on the homes page. And anyone could submit any event. So if you have an event that you want to try to promote, by all means, submit it there. We, we'll throw it up. But uh, you could get information for the Jolly Good Fly-In. So that's a fly-in that the Cobb County RC Radio Control Club, my home club now down here in Georgia, and uh, Patrick's Club, uh, them along with Flightline RC, not the product company Flightline RC, the product name, that's the name of their club. They're up in Dalton, Georgia. We're going to have our own event there. Uh, Dalton Municipal Airport, so you guys can fly anything from turbines to little foamies to helicopters. Uh, everything's open but drones, but they're also going to have the commemorative Air Force there with a T-34 Mentor that they're going to be giving rides out for like $125 for 20 minutes, I believe. So that's cool, but that's a three-day show at a full-scale airport 
We're going to be flying off the runway, but the airport is so small, they only get maybe five or six incoming traffic a day. So, you know, occasionally we'll just put the red flag up, everybody lands, let the real plane land, and we get back up to flying. So that should be a lot of fun, and we're hoping that's a show that can grow and just become a yearly staple for people, in at least in the southeast of America. But I think that's going to do it here, guys. Oh, RC After Hours. I forgot. I don't want to forget RC Hours. Andre, Chris, all those great guys at RC After Hours. Alpha, who's in the chat now, he's the head of our production team. Uh, he'll be on the RC After Hours podcast this Sunday to talk more about the F-18 and anything else that they ask him. Alpha's been known to go on there for a long time. And RC After Hours, I believe it's going to be their five-year anniversary uh, for that RC podcast, which is a, an amazing feat and just a great way. We love the idea of podcasts, so you can get your RC whether you're driving in a car, traveling, uh, the RC After Hours guys, they do a great job, and we're always happy to see them, uh, to join them uh, uh, on live. And hopefully, maybe, I might be able to jump in with Alpha and again, have the F-18 there just to show the people who might have missed. But we hope you guys are digging the F-18C. We'll have, obviously, let you know all the information. Subscribe to our email list. Every week I make those emails that I send out to you guys. I'll let you know there, of course, the day it will be for sale. And then, um, what's it called, with the, with the estimated date once the product page goes live. Uh, and join us on Hobby Squawk. Like, share, and subscribe on YouTube, guys, and get excited because the 2019 season is almost here for uh, a majority of us. It's almost here with the way the weather's been, but um, we're so excited to get out there to meet you guys, fly with you guys, and keep delivering awesome products. So thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Woo! Woo! Are we off?